Okay, why don't we uh, reconvene? We're now going to move to uh, two concept clearances, uh, both of which were discussed initially. The last council meeting uh, deferred to, to today's council meeting. Uh, a lot of activity has taken place for both, including conference calls, lots of conversations. Um, and we're going to start off with Anastasia Wise uh, presenting the concept clearance on genomic sequencing and newborn screening disorders. So I'd like to start off just by welcoming our guests from NICHD who are with us today, so Tina Irv and Melissa Parisi, who are sitting in the back there. So if you have any questions about some of this, I might also refer to them at points. So as you may remember, we presented in February a concept clearance for newborn sequencing with a U19 award mechanism. The goal of this initiative would be to stimulate research in three coordinated areas applicable to newborn screening related to acquiring and analyzing a genomic data set, performing clinical research to advance understanding of disorders identified via newborn screening, and then related research in regarding ethical, legal, and social implications of possibly implementing this type of broad DNA-based screening in newborns. And this initiative would be funded jointly by both NHGRI and NICHD, who would each be committing $2.5 million per year for a total of five years. At February Council, we presented two related proposals for concept clearance. The first of these was an SBIR STTR award, which was approved. And then the second concept was this U19 award, which was deferred to this council session. And to give you just a little bit of background, this has been a long process that we've been going through working with NICHD, developing this concept over a number of years. This actually started at a workshop in 2010 discussing newborn screening in the genomic era and setting a research agenda that was sponsored jointly by NICHD, NHGRI, and the Office of Rare Disease Research. We followed this up with a concept clearance at NICHD's council in January, as well as the presentation here in February, where though we heard in general from council that there was a lot of approval of this as a good idea in general, it seemed like everyone kind of had a little bit of a different picture as to how this initiative should be structured. Mm -hmm. We heard a number of concerns from council, and we've tried to group them into five main categories. The first of these was that we needed to really focus on a clear scientific rationale for what we expect to learn from this initiative. The second major council concern was related to the population selection, and that we should consider the added scientific value of broadening the study population beyond uh, the confirmed positive newborn screen individuals. We also heard from council that the 500 gene targeted sequencing didn't seem to be enough of an advance as well as a couple of more ELSI-related concerns, the first of which was related more to the population selection and overall study design, and the second dealing with public perception, public relations, and how we would be doing the consent for these subjects. We continued this process with a series of phone calls and discussions over email with our council subgroup. We then revised the concept and sent that out to our council subgroup in April through a series of further revisions, both with our council subgroup as well as NICHD, we have come up with a new final concept clearance to present to you again here in May, and made a number of changes based on both the feedback from our council as well as staff at NICHD and NHGRI. The, for the first concern that council had raised related to the scientific rationale for this initiative, we've identified three research questions for these applications to focus on. And the applicants would be allowed to select one or more of these research questions for their research. But this would then provide a little bit more focus to the initiative. The first of these questions is for disorders currently screened for newborns, how can genomic sequencing replicate or augment known newborn screening results? The second question is what knowledge about conditions not currently screened for newborns could genomic sequencing of newborns provide? And the third question is, what additional clinical information could be learned from genomic sequencing relevant to the clinical care of newborns? So this covers a couple of the different areas that we heard brought up both by staff and council members related to looking at both the technology side of what can at doing genomic sequencing add to newborn screening as well as additional knowledge related to more of the clinical conditions themselves. Related to some of the other council concerns, we've decided to broaden the initiative to include both positive and negative screen individuals, so any individuals that have no newborn screening results. We've also removed the 500 gene targeted sequencing and are requiring either whole exome or whole genome sequencing. 
We've asked the applicants to tailor their research to the context of the sequencing and the research questions that they are looking to answer. And so this really relates to if you're looking at individuals that had a known disorder and already had tested positive from newborn screening, you might be asking different questions related to your LC research as well as returning different results than if you were looking at individuals that had screened negative and potentially a condition that isn't currently screened for in newborns. And we're also requiring a description of both the informed consent process and how the applicants would return their results within the applications themselves. And with that, I'd like to thank all of the groups here at NHGRI that have been working on this uh, newborn initiative, as well as the folks at NICHD who have helped to develop this joint project. And with that, I'll take any questions. Yes, sir. Sorry. Um, go back to, on the slides, on just mm -hmm. on the ones where you have A, B, and C. To the questions. Yeah, those. Yes. Um, so, I, and again, I'm just trying to understand this. I, I think so. When you when you talk about screening a newborn now, so the baby's born, mm -hmm. the screening is done when there's a problem, or is all all newborns? No, all newborns okay. are screened. Okay, so then you would be sequent, and so now you're are the, the discussion about not doing targeted, but doing whole exome or whole genome. You would sequence, or at least these would be research projects to then. These would be research se projects. Se sequence uh, uh, newborns regardless of phenotype, and. It, right? Whether, so, there, whether there's a, a problem or not. So the applicants could propose a research project that was related to a specific phenotype, or they could propose to look at individuals that didn't screen positive for one of the known newborn screening um, phenotypes. And that could be that there's another phenotype that's very relevant to newborns that they are interested in looking at, or it could be individuals that are expressing a phenotype at that point that they want to learn more about. Okay. Uh, okay, I see. I just had one question. It, as the, the concept clearance reads in what was distributed, um, I think very appropriately the LC um, component is, is put forth as a necessary component. Um, I just want to make sure everybody knew that in your, in your presentation it's, it's not as clear that, that um, you know, my own feelings are that I, it's not at all clear whether newborn screening using whole genome sequencing will actually be useful, but that's what we're going to ask the community to come up with ideas about. I do think it's such a special population and such a vulnerable population that, that the RFA itself needs to make very clear that that needs to be a, a prominent component of any uh, um, um, yes, all of the applications effort. would be required to do research in all three of those component areas, the okay. genomic sequencing, the clinical research, as well as the LC research. And then these questions are more to focus the different okay. types of research projects. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we will use similar language that we use for the CSER program, where it was that pretty correct. clear that, in yeah. fact, if yes. you didn't do well in all three or all, all the areas, That's you didn't good, do because well. I could see that as a primary research question. Right, the LC Pardon. issues, and that do, doesn't come across as much in, in this. I just I think that's real important. Wait, are, are you saying that that you might have grants where they have only that component? Mm. No, they have to have all three oh, they components, do have, okay. have have all, all applications. So, as a component. Okay, so one way to avoid people tacking that on as a paragraph at the end of their grant, which they certainly used to do, I don't know if it happens as much, is uh, would be to put it as the first thing that they talk about. Because if you think about it, when you're if you're going to do this, you better have that figured out before you even start. So maybe make that um, uh, 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 more critical by, by putting it up front. That's a good suggestion. Although I can see the value um, in newborn screening for Mendelian disorders with high penetrance, I think I have some concerns about when you're going to find variants, especially in whole exome, that give rise to conditions where the outcome is not certain, so they could increase risk for learning disabilities or autism, for example, and you stigmatize that child um, and think about early interventions. And I think some work needs to be done on the LC side and also the clinical side to understand the balance between wanting to do an early intervention which may help a child versus the ethical issues related to stigmatizing a child who may be perfectly have a perfectly normal outcome um, because it's only a risk, not a, a certainty. 
And I think that's part of the reason why we really wanted the researchers to choreograph their LC research and their clinical research as well as what results they're returning based on what research question they're asking and the particular tailor that, that research to that question itself because depending upon what phenotype they're looking at, what results they return may be different and what's appropriate may be different depending upon what questions they're asking. Tony, is that a concern of yours, or are you raising this as an important area that might be investigated by I an think, application? I think it, it, since it is a concern, it should be investigated. The problem is you won't know the outcome for many years, so you almost have to do longitudinal studies to really understand and, and understand talking to parents whether they want, how do they balance their child being stigmatized versus having an early intervention which might help them. The problem is those kind of studies you're going to take, they're not something you can do in a short period of time. Rick, I'm not sure we figured that out for Mendelian very well, right? I mean, we, we need uh, uh, even. I'm saying it's even, it's even hard on the simpler ones in the sense that, that uh, for an adult onset disease like Huntington's, just, you know, even way back when, um, uh, you, you don't, I mean, do, do you want to do that and, and know that information when there's not much you can do about it and the stigmatizing? In some of these cases, there are things you can do. There are interventions which can help. And you're going to find these things more <laughs> frequently because they're common disorders. So what I would say, Tony, my own opinion is that this, this concept clearance would hopefully attract applications and research uh, proposals that would start to look at that, whether we'd have to evaluate whether they would be too long term. I, mean, I think there's a lot of details we worked out, but what you led with, I completely agree with, is the, are some of the LC issues associated with it, which one of the things I think we as an institute would uniquely bring, and I think Child Health would echo that as the partnership of having sort of a cadre of researchers in the LC community that we have fostered, that getting them involved in some of this and partnered with Child Health where they bring this incredible expertise around newborn screening more broadly, that I think is sort of the kind of uniqueness we saw with this partnership that made us enthusiastic. Pearl? Is there um, any way of partnering with the Return of Research Results Initiative, which is looking at pediatrics, um, you know, pediatric eMERGE, et cetera? I mean, it just seems like that might offer some yeah, additional. We would really like to have these groups meet together and discuss those issues, yes. Anyone else on council? Child health folks, since you're here, is there, is there anything you want to add to this? Because I, no, you're fine, good, all right. I just wanted to make sure we <laughs> wanted to give you a chance if you want to say anything. So we, the, we require a vote for this. I'm looking for a motion. Move approval. Is there a second? Second. Any additional discussion? If not, all in favor? Opposed? Abstentions? A couple abstentions, okay. Several abstentions, all right. Thank you. Thank you, Anastasia. Thank you.